Yo, c- c- conductor. Peace, y'all. Salute, salute to you all. New merch in the store right now. Conductor. Conductor, we have a problem.com or the merch shelf right here. I got hoodies in. Came out so far, bro. Came out so far. Support me with the merch really fuels this channel, fuels me, keeps me going, keeps the lights on, you know what I'm saying? Keep them bills paid. So I appreciate y'all. Run it up. Great quality. Great quality, man. Nah. Makami, Balenz Cho, the last song on the album is a song I produced. It's called Self Love. When I do the Instagram Q&A questions on my story, I get people asking me, Conductor, what's your favorite song you ever produced? And I, I got a carousel of three, and it depends on what day it is, right? It's Self Love, Stella Ray, Makami, or Peppers, West Side Gun, Yasin, and Quali. So those are my three favorites. This one has got to be higher ranking than the other two, though. <laughs> but um, I just love this shit so much, bro. This shit, man, it bring back memories. I made this in my old studio, last joint of the night type of thing. You know what I'm saying? I was getting tired, made this, and came alive. It just soulful joint. Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Get to the pads so y'all can see how simple this track is. How simple the elements. So we up top with the sample. The little turnaround at the end of that. Some filter work. The vocal. So the vocal with a bit of delay on it. And then literally, literally kick and snare. That's it. Literally kick and snare in this. Like, it's not even, it, there's no break. It's just me, one, two, on a kick, and on the snare that's in there. So, let's solo out, solo out these tracks here. It's just, it's just, man. It's just a beautiful sample for one. I kind of, you know, did my did my thing, seasonings, um, before I sampled in, and it just feels great. My boy Matt, shout out to my dog Matt, the little homie man. He came over with a CD, and the CD had all these samples on it, and I had worked on music for about three or four hours that day, and this was the last last beat of the session really. And um, I went through my records and I was really coming up with nothing. And he was like, yo, I, you know, hey conductor, I brought, I brought some shit too. So I took the CD and I had CDJs uh, in the studio set up. So I put it in and this was the first sample was on there. I didn't ask him where it was from. I didn't ask him if he made it. I didn't ask him shit. I just, I just instantly went to work, you know what I'm saying? It just feel good, man. So I just hit him with the one, two. Yeesh. Mm. I was jamming that day, man. I- like I'm feeling how I'm feeling right now. I gotta remember I'm I'm doing a video, but I just remember jamming that day and just wanting to just. We had it so loud, we had it cranked up so loud in there, and um, the groove is just this thing. You know what I mean? I can't describe it. I can't describe it. It's just soul music. You can't really describe. But uh, so now we're sitting with this. I'm sitting with it. I'm like, yo. It needs a B section. But the little sample that he brought on, on, his CD, on his CD, it didn't have no more to it. It was just basically the length of that sample, and um, there was no B section to it. So uh, I was like, oh, okay. So I pulled out the uh, micro cork. And played some lines, and that didn't work. And then I uh, hooked up the grandmother Moog, I think, and tried to add some, like, floaties, and that didn't work. Um, 
So the day before, rewind it back. The day before this session, my father and uh, and my, my mom and dad, some of her records are in there too, but he had a little iron tin of 45s. And I'd never seen this before. I thought I had all the all the vinyls that he had, you know? But he had this little 45 tin, like a popcorn can, small one, and had 45s in it loose. Some had his name on it. Some had my mom's name on it. And uh, I picked up a record that had my mom's name on it. I put it on there and got the vocal line out of it. You know? So I got that that vocal line. Doesn't make any sense. I slowed the record all the way down, pitched it down, put it on 33, slowed the record down. Didn't make sense, but it felt right. You know what I mean? It felt right. Mm -hmm. Crazy, bruh. Bruh. It just, I, I always mention William Burrow cut up, cut up style of stuff. This was different though. This was luck. <laughs> it was luck, but I didn't know what I was looking for. But I told Matt, I was like, I need it. Maybe just like a little vocal, a vocal sample over top, like chipmunk soul. I was gonna do a chipmunk soul over it. But when I found that and that loving yourself and taking them all for granted, I was just like. Yo, it just resonated so cold in my life at the time, too, because at the time I was actually working on valuing myself more, being a little bit more greedy, saying no to people, valuing my mental health, valuing my physical health, valuing my spiritual health. That's what I was going through at that time. You know, it's like, man, I'm about to like turn up for me. And so when I found that vocal by, by luck, like I said, and it's that, you know, loving yourself and taking them all for granted. It's like, I just felt that energy. Like, yo, it's my turn now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's my turn. Everybody eating, it's my turn. That was really kind of an empowering moment to put those two worlds together. And it was, you know, the creative angels sending messages to me while in the room. You know, they were sending messages to me through the music that I needed to do that. So I made the record, I made the beat, I shut the machines off, I dumped it, shut the machines off, and all the way home, I just had this record jamming, bruh. I had this beat jamming in the car, and I was dancing. At, I mean, it just felt so dope, man. I got home, the first person I thought to send it to was a singer from Canada named Carling Stevenson the homie she texts me back immediately like fire emojis like oh conduct like this is crazy d like this is crazy we had a quick text she's like what you want me to do i was like i don't want you to necessarily do anything sing on it or nothing i just want you to jam with me i just needed somebody to jam again you know the next day literally man i'm recounting this in real time for y'all like i really remember this moment i texted uh my, I want to say he called me and I was telling him about the beat. I texted it to him when we got off the phone. So we had like a conversation or whatever, whatever. And then he's like, yo, don't forget to send me that. So I sent him that beat over, not in a pack, but just as a one-on-one. -on -one, Cause I knew that he would understand. And I didn't tell him about what I was going through spiritually, mentally, physically, none of that. I, I just told him that this beat is soulful, brilliant, and it felt great. So when he sent the draft back, we're probably, probably about a week or two. He sent the draft back. He sent the draft back, bro. On there talking. On there talking, called itself love, and then he just went into another bag that I had never heard mock go into. Being romantic about it, having fun with uh, the idea of this. He kind of had the LL Cool J, I need love voice. Did y'all peep that? I gotta ask Mark if he did that on purpose. If he did that, he, he probably won't tell me. But I'm gonna ask him if he did it on purpose. But the raps were, those, those weren't, that wasn't lyricism to spin your head around. Mock delivered a message. He showed his character. He was personal. He was the big brother. He was, he was just amazing on that record, man. You you can feel his love through it. You can feel his his empathy through that record. And yeah, man, one of my favorite joints, Self Love, Balance Cho. That's all I got. Merch, conductorwehaveaproblem.com. Support your boy, Conductor Out. Peace, 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 peace.
Peace. Conductor, we have a problem.